They also needed improved tires. Tires are always a big factor, and the Limeys have been running cars up there a lot, and so he thought he'd try to question them about some good rubber, and every time he talked to anybody there, they finally admitted that they weren't interested at all in assisting an American to break the land speed record because the English held it. And so he said, to hell with him. He said, so he started working on his own tire deal, and I guess he figured out what he wanted to run, and the Goodyear people made it for him. Finally, step four was completed, and his new car, Challenger 1, became reality. They had come a long way from the 35 Ford, but each painstaking step that followed had answered hundreds of important questions. Now, only one remained. Could Thompson break 400 miles per hour and live to tell about it? The John Cobb record still remained an awesome challenge. Cobb's car was much larger and heavier and powered by two mammoth aircraft engines. By comparison, Thompson's lack of funding caused him to use easily accessible stock block engines which forced him to create a more aerodynamic and lighter car to hopefully achieve the same speed or better. In testing Challenger 1, he discovered that wind would actually cause a suction under the car which held the speed down. This effect to a car is just the opposite of what a wing can do to make an airplane fly. Thompson most assuredly didn't want to fly, but he did need to release this ground hold. Mickey didn't know it at the time, but this condition would later be known in racing as ground defects, and Thompson was on the verge of breaking through that unknown barrier. While every known precaution is taken to protect the driver, it is clearly understood that an accident involving speeds in excess of 300 miles per hour could result in certain death to the driver. Athel Graham of Salt Lake City lost his life when his car went out of control at about 300 miles per hour. In 1960, Donald Campbell almost suffered the same fate, as did many others before and since. Most other vehicles, including Graham's car and Campbell's huge multi-million dollar creation, had what Thompson thought was a flaw. The driver's cockpit was in the front, where there was nothing on which to guide. Challenger 1, by contrast, had the driver's cockpit at the rear, enabling Mickey to see if the car was drifting off course. She gave the outward appearance of a sleek racing machine, but all who worked on her knew only too well that under that pretty blue paint were a mass of used parts purchased from surplus stores and junkyards. Challenger 1 was powered by four Pontiac engines, which were capable of producing 3,000 horsepower. Additionally, Thompson reasoned that in order to stop, he would need more than brakes. Jim Dietz designed a parachute system which used a 12-gauge shotgun shell to blow it out at the end of the run. 